Hi, I'm Gene Kempner, Vice President of the Professional Platform Tennis Association, and we're here with another video installment. The theme of this current video is how to practice and how to get the most out of your practice time. A lot of people are under the impression that practice means coming out and warming up for 10 minutes and then playing three sets of paddle. And that works up to a point, but you're going to get the most out of your paddle game when you dedicate a certain number of hours of your playing time just to drilling and practicing. Joining us in helping with our video is the former PPTA president, Mike Raleigh. Next to Mike is North Shore Country Club head professional, Greg O'Neill, and next to Greg is Evanston Golf Club head professional, Dane Schmidlow. One of the most obvious drills you can do on your own is the serving drill. I'm gonna start obviously at the baseline. And with my priority, I'm beginning very slowly. I haven't hit any serves yet, so I wanna loosen up. I wanna make sure I hit about half speed and make absolutely sure I don't hit the net here on my serves. Nice and easy on the swing. I wanna work on my wrist snap and my control and swing in my right foot into the court as I hit. Once I feel I'm loosened up, I'm going to start hitting my normal serve at a full pace. So I want to make absolutely sure I'm actually practicing my serve. So I'm going to come out here and hit a hopper of serves at least once or twice a week. Half the hopper into the deuce court, the other half to the ad court. Most of the clubs you play at have hoppers and you're welcome to avail yourself of the hoppers and this is a really good drill for practicing your screen shots. As we know on screens, one of the keys is moving your feet. So, all by myself, I'm going to practice the screen, moving my feet, hitting a lob. And I can do 20 of these. And you can practice off the back screens as well, like this. Always moving your feet and getting your body in position. The phrase I like to use when I teach is screen, body, ball. So you make sure that's your alignment. Screen, my body and my contact point with the balls right here and I focus on that I'm doing my job then you can also practice drives off the screen same way you practice lobs and set up nicely hit a good three-quarter speed five shot once again always moving my feet and practicing screen body ball one of the best drills we use is called the lob drive drill. If you notice what Greg and Mike are doing here is they're alternating lobs and drives. The whole key on this drill is a cooperative effort from both of the players. If you notice how Greg's hitting his overheads, he's putting them right where Mike can get a good swing so he can practice his drive. And Mike in turn is hitting his overheads right toward Greg, so Greg will get a lot of practice hitting his volleys. All right, the next evolution of this drill is, as you notice what Mike is doing now, he's driving off the back screen. So Greg has tweaked his overheads. He's hitting them a little bit harder now, so Mike will get a good look at his screen drive. And Greg can practice his volleys. Another good one-on-one -on -one drill is the two people with just cross-court volleys. Notice that no matter where volleys are hit, these players are hitting exclusively backhand volleys. Now when you find somebody that really likes to drill as much as you do, then you can practice a huge variety of shots. In this situation here, I'm going to hit to Mike and he's going to be practicing his screen shots. For the less advanced players, I think the feeder should be over here. It's really important the feeder in this drill hit some accurate shots. So I'm going to aim right in front of the alley here. Not too hard, not too soft. Oh, so I can get some practice on me. Then the more comfortable he, more comfortable he gets, I'm going to toughen up the screens. I'm going to make some harder screens. Now lower screens and softer screens. He really has to work to dig those out. And your more advanced players can hit from over here. And you make this very realistic then for Mike. Paddle's moving. He's got lots of good follow through on his lobs. Then you can 
take the same drill and Mike can practice any drives off the back screen. All right, another one-on-one -on -one drill is very realistic, but your partners are invisible. There's nobody else on the court, so all shots have to be hit cross-court. It's really good practice for your first uh, three shots of every point to serve the return and the first volley. And you could get a match uh, simulation on this where you play a tiebreaker. All points played into the deuce side. And first one to seven wins. And when you get that uh, third player shows up, you can do a two-on-one drill the exact same way as the one-on-one -on -one drill. One player plays, when that point ends, the next player's up. And you always do it with two servers on the same side. And you can keep score, simulating match play where the combined score of the serving team against the single score of the receiver. You notice with the two-on-one drill, all shots from the net team have to be kept cross-court. The single player over there on the ad side, he can hit any lob he wants, he can drive any place he wants. The next drill, a very realistic drill, is two-on-one once again. The serving team has to keep 100% of their shots cross court, but the receiving player hits wherever he wants. Another good drill is you start with the two players at the net, getting a screenshot to the deep player. His restriction is he can only hit lobs. He cannot hit a drive here. The goal of the person at the baseline is to hit as many consecutive screens as he can possibly do. And you can turn this into a three-way competition. Whoever can get the most lobs in a row out of the three players who are taking turns in that screen corner. The variation on the drill that you just saw is now, rather than lobbing every single ball, the player at the baseline has to drive every single ball. And once again, you practice how many drives in a row he can make. People at the next should work this as a cooperative drill, keeping everything over over on the side where the driver is and letting him drive ball. So he gets a lot of practice on his drive. They get a lot of practice hitting volleys. Once you get all four players here, then you can practice a great drill where you're practicing the first three shots of every point. Serve, return, first volley catch. This is a cooperative drill where you're going about uh, three quarters of your regular speed. So don't rip your big serves or rip the big drives. You want to keep the ball in play for three consecutive shots. So we're going about three quarters on this drill. The drill you're watching now is the figure eight drill. All four players are cooperating once again with high emphasis on hitting their backhand volleys on every single volley. One side hits all volleys cross court, the other side hits every volley down the line. Cooperative effort, you're going about half speed with your focus on just hitting your backhand volleys. The drills you've just seen should be very useful in helping you improve your platform tennis games. It's really true, the harder you practice, the luckier you get. So remember to always practice with a purpose and find uh, two or three players who like to practice as much as you do. Thanks very much, guys, for coming, Greg and Mike and Dane. And we'll see you next time. Hold on.